Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel. We are today in the studio. It's called Brilliant White. It's part of Brisbane Camera Hire, and I'm here with the lovely Susan from Brisbane Camera Hire, and we are putting together a video for you guys all about portrait photography. So what we've got lined up is 10 really cool portrait tips. I've got five, Susan's got five. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you stick around. So here we are at the Brilliant White Studio, which is part of Brisbane Camera High. Brisbane Camera High, if you don't know, is run by Susan. And of course, they hire out only the finest cameras, lenses, lighting, everything. Plus, they have this really cool studio at the back. So thanks for having us. Pleasure. You this can rent um, everything you see here. All available at brisbanecamerahire.com.au yep. if you want to find out more. I will put links in the description below to Susan's Instagram and website so you can find out more about the studio and the higher side of things as well. Um, as I mentioned, we've got lots of portrait tips to share. So let's get straight in with tip number one. So my first tip is to focus on the eyes. And this may seem like an obvious one, but sometimes people miss this. When you're talking to somebody, it's all about engaging with the person that you're having the conversation with. So generally you look that person in the eye. Now with photography, it's no different. If you look at an image and the eyes are out of focus, then the image just doesn't quite work as well because you're not engaging with the subject. So I think it's really important to focus on the eyes of the subject. If the subject is looking directly at the camera, then it doesn't really matter which of the two eyes you focus on. But generally, if somebody is looking slightly off camera, then you focus on the eye that is closest to the camera. Now, if you're photographing animals, you treat them in the same way. If you're taking a picture of your dog, make sure you focus on the eye. I can't tell you how many times I've seen pictures of dogs and the nose is in focus, but the eyes are out of focus. So a pretty basic tip, but really, really important. So what you wanna do is learn how to control your camera's focus points. Now I've looked into this and dealt with this in a separate video. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out later. Don't forget there's also no hard and fast rule that says that your subject needs to be looking directly at the camera for their portrait. Um, some of the most interesting portraits are where the subject is looking away and off camera. Absolutely, like with a lot of photography, sometimes it's good to bend the rules and try different things. So if the subject's looking at the camera, make sure their eyes are in focus, but of course they don't always need to be looking off or actually at the camera for the image to work. So for my first tip, my suggestion, and I do this on almost all of my shoots, is to have a mood board or just a collection of images that you've seen um, that, that gives you the general mood of what you're trying to replicate. So I'll use Pinterest for this sort of thing and I'll start collecting images that um, might give me posing ideas or lighting techniques or just a general mood or theme of the shoot. Uh, now sometimes this mood board can be client driven, sometimes uh, your, your model or your client will send you a mood board of what they want you to achieve for them, so it's definitely a good idea to be well across this before your shoot. That's a great tip as well, I actually did this a couple of weeks ago, I had a shoot that had a 60s theme to it, so I created a Pinterest page that I could share with a model that had some images on it. Some of the images were the, um, to give her an idea of the look that we were trying to achieve, but also some of the poses that I really liked. It was a really good fun shoe. We had a um, 60s clothes, we had a um, old 60s Volkswagen um, bus as well, and it was a lot of fun. So that's a really great tip. Yeah, I use it a lot. Uh, and sometimes if your client sends you a mood board and you think they're maybe not quite clear on what they, what they want to achieve, it's not a bad idea uh, when you're shooting to show them a couple of images on the back of your camera just to make sure that they're happy and it is what they wanted because um, there's nothing worse than delivering a set of images and they're not happy. And good news, Pinterest is free. Okay, so now for some tips on lighting because lighting is so, so important with photography generally, but obviously very, very important with portrait photography. Um, in a studio type setup like we have here at the Brilliant White Studios, generally you wanna try and avoid flat lighting. And what I mean by that is you don't want your light source to be central, you want it to be off to the side. Generally in a studio situation, you want your key light to be off to the side so it creates a bit of shape and a bit of shadow to the face. Um, it's a much nicer look. And this is where I think a lot of people get into trouble because if they're using flash, for example, it sits right on top of the camera. It's, the light is 
equal on both sides of the face and you get this really nasty flat look. If you're working outdoors, try and look for ways of making your lights nice and soft. So an overcast day is perfect. Otherwise, um, look for ways in which you can maybe soften the light. I've got a uh, what's called a diffuser here and this is a diffuser which means that the light can pass through it. So if I've got the sun beating down on me, I can place this above my head. Obviously somebody else would hold it there for me and it will soften the light. If I grab the cover, this is a reflector cover. So you put this on and now you can use it to bounce light. And this is great for filling in shadows. So if you've got somebody wearing a peaked cap, for example, and there's a shadow along the top of the head, you can pop a reflector underneath and it will bounce the light in and fill in the shadows. And there's a couple of different colors. Um, so you've got a, a silver side, which gives you a very contrasty light. The gold side gives you a nice warm kind of glow as well. So there's a couple of really good tips. And the great thing about a, a reflector and diffuser kit is it's a really cheap and effective way of giving you nicer lighting. Um, just jumping back to flash before, as Paul mentioned, if you do have a flash uh, and you've got one that you can see here that you know you can move, the, move it around, do try and bounce this if you can off the ceiling or off a wall, hopefully white so you don't get any colour cast, uh, but that will give you a much nicer flash, it won't look quite so flashy. Uh, the next step up from doing that will be to get your flash off camera altogether um, with a wireless trigger or something like that. Um, which can get a bit, a bit tricky to start with, but it will really take your portraits to the next level. Absolutely. Another thing you might want to consider is LED lighting, which is a really good alternative because it's nice and compact. You don't need a yep. big battery pack. It doesn't get really hot as well. And we've got some running in the studio. In fact, all the lighting in the mm -hmm. studio today is LED lighting. So we've got these big panel lights in front of us. Uh, we've got these small units over here. This is a small unit from Loom Cube. LED lighting is really, really nice. With a little unit like this you can pop it on the top of the camera where the flash normally sits and you can turn it down so it's not actually the main light but it creates this really nice little catch light in the eye so they're really really cool. So a lot of my shoots actually take place in the studio this very one we're sitting in at the moment uh, and so what I do always on every shoot is I set up and test way before the client or the model arrives so when you're shooting with studio lights, there is tends to be always a lot of things that can go wrong. So I will set up my lights, I will meter them, I will take test shots, like I said, way before anyone arrives. Uh, there's really nothing worse than trying to troubleshoot things not going to plan, especially when you've got an audience in front of you. Doesn't look terribly professional. Um, and if you're not shooting in a studio and you're out on location, um, then it's always good to scout that location before the day. So it's good to know uh, where you're going to shoot, it's good to go at the same time of day that you will be doing the shoot so you can see how the light will fall um, find your good little pockets of, of nice natural light um, and then on the day you'll feel well prepared um, and yeah, that's a really good tip of mine. You just cannot be too prepared. Yeah, you're spot on there. We, um, we ran a, a portrait photography course just a few weeks ago. So the week prior to that, myself and Susan went to, um, went to the location where we were gonna run the course and we walked around it. We, we, we found some really cool spots. We wanted to get a feel for how the light is falling. So it's really just about being prepared because there's nothing worse than just panicking on the day. It's not very professional. So I think being organized is, is key. It's key. Absolutely nothing worse than working under pressure. My next tip is to use a lens with a longer focal length because this will compress perspective and give a nicer look to the face. It's generally accepted that for portraiture you want to use a focal length of at least 50mm but ideally something bigger so 50mm, 85mm or longer. Wide lenses tend to flatten the face and make the face look a bit fatter, but longer lenses, like this lens that Susan has here, will compress perspective and give a nicer look. So tell me more about this lens. Uh, that's right, so this one here, it's a Canon lens, it's a 70 to 200, so it is of that longer focal length, 70 to 200. Uh, it's also an f2.8, so it can give you a really shallow depth of field. Um, really popular lens in every wedding photographer's kit. It's also, it's quite expensive to buy, but um, quite affordable just to rent for the weekend if you need it. And uh, one of our more popular lenses, definitely. 
So remember, a lens like this that has a long focal length is doing two things. It's going to compress perspective, which will affect the shape of the face, give you a really nice natural look, but it will also give you what is commonly called a shallow depth of field, which is a fancy term for a blurry background and a blurry foreground, which makes the subject stand out. And it's a very popular look for portrait photography. So my next portrait tip is short and sweet and wins every time. If you're shooting in a studio like I do a lot, a quiet studio can be a really awkward place. So play music. Um, I have a Spotify playlist going um, and it just relaxes everyone. So if you can um, and you feel like the mood is a little bit awkward, play some music. Great tip. Okay, so let's now talk about camera modes. Now, of course, if you're confident with your camera, you can shoot full manual, but a very popular mode, particularly for portrait photographers, is aperture priority, which allows you to control the aperture with the camera looking after the shutter speed for you. Now, to get into the aperture priority mode, look at your camera mode dial on the top of your camera. Most cameras, this is simply the letter A for aperture priority. On the Canon cameras, it's AV. Now, why is it important for us to control the aperture? Well, aperture affects depth of field, which controls and affects how much of your image is in focus in front of the subject and also behind the subject. A very popular look with portraiture is to make the subject stand out by making the subject really sharp, but making the background soft and blurry so the subject really stands out and the focus and the attention is more on the person than maybe things in the background which sometimes can be very distracting. So what we're talking about here is opening the aperture up wide, which is a lower F number, F2.8, F1.8, F1.4, a very popular lens for portrait photographers, particularly if you are beginning and you're starting out, is the very popular Nifty 50. So this particular one is the Canon 50mm F1.8 lens, so a reasonable focal length for a portrait photography, but also has a really wide aperture. Best thing about this lens is it's very affordable as well. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. Now, if you're taking a group photo rather than a shot of an individual, what you don't want to do is open the aperture up wide because that will give you a shallow depth of field and some of the people in your image may not be in focus. What you want to do instead is close the aperture down. This is a larger F number. I'm going to suggest around about F8. Okay, so my next tip is all about how to make your clients feel comfortable in front of the camera. So when you've got a camera pointed in your face, it's quite uncomfortable and you'd like to distract them um, from what's going on. So what I do is I just chat to them. I ask them heaps of questions. We find things in common. Uh, I make terrible jokes and make them laugh just to get some genuine expressions and genuine smiles. Um, shooting children can be really tricky. Um, that's where that long lens comes into play that we were talking about before, like a 7H200, in that you're not right up close in their face, um, that you can be a little bit further away and still get some nice tight images. Um, definitely get down onto their level and don't forget that kids have a really short attention span. So you're going to need to try and get some nice safe shots quite quickly because uh, kids will give up after not much time at all. Um, but things like treats and snacks and uh, the promise of a reward We'll always get a few extra minutes out of them. Um, and yeah, I find if I can do all of these tips and tricks uh, during my shoot, at the end of it, my client will go, oh, was that it? That was easy. Now we can make a whole video about composition. It is a really big subject. So my advice if you're a beginner and new to portrait photography is to try and keep it quite simple. Uh, one composition rule that you definitely want to consider using is the rule of thirds, which basically means that instead of placing your subject right in the middle of the frame, try placing your subject off to the side for a nicer, more pleasing composition. I have done a video all about the rule of thirds. Again, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. If you're subject is looking off frame or off camera then make sure that the direction they're looking is into the space that you've created so for example if I'm at the left hand side of the frame and I want to look off camera I want to be looking into the space that I've created another thing that people often miss is that you don't have to take every photo like this this is generally referred to as the landscape mode turn your camera on its side they call it the portrait mode this often gives you a more pleasing composition Once once you've got the camera on its side, get in, move a bit closer to your subject, fill the frame, then take some steps back so you've got a bit of space around your subject. Mix it up, have fun. 
Okay, so posing. Now this is an area that I struggle with a little bit and I think probably quite a few people do struggle with posing ideas. Um, unless you're shooting a professional model, uh, just normal people will not know how to pose. So they're going to look to you for some direction, which can be a bit daunting. So uh, that's where I said before to have your mood board and sort of inspiration images. Uh, but it's always good just to ask people to do something, to just move in some way, it gets them a little bit more relaxed. So just things like brushing the hair out of their, you know, behind their ears, uh, just hold their watch, adjust their tie, a hand on hip, something like that. Uh, it just gives them a general direction of how to move their body without giving them a really rigid pose uh, straight up. So uh, if I want to demonstrate a pose with someone, um, you should never touch your model or your subject. You should model for them what you'd like them to do. So actually do it in front of them and have them copy you. Um, now hands can definitely be a problem. People don't know what to do with their hands. Uh, they get a bit awkward. So I find that props are good in this situation. So you know, whether it be a book or a coffee mug or a camera or something that's sentimental to them, just having them hold something in their hand uh, makes them feel and look a lot more comfortable. Absolutely. So as a thank you for making it this far into the video, we're gonna now give you two bonus tips. I've got a tip, Susan's got a tip, and my tip is actually posing related, which is what you were just talking about. And my tip is this, ask your model to shift her weight onto one leg. This means your um, subject will look less symmetrical, uh, but it will, it will create a nice sort of S shape in the body. This is something that a lot of professional models use. All you've got to do is watch a, um, a fashion show, for example. You can Google it, look it up on YouTube, and what you'll see is as the model reaches the end of the catwalk, she will adopt this pose. She will shift all her weight onto one leg, and that's the point where all the pros take the photo. She will then turn around and walk back again. The next model walks down, does the same pose. It's a good pose, it works. It's a really good tip. Susan. All right, so my tip is get yourself down to a dollar store and for literally a dollar, you can buy yourself just a small string of LED fairy lights. So they're battery powered. I don't know if you can see them because the studio is quite bright. However, shooting through these gives the coolest effect and we'll pop up some images yeah. uh, which we took on our portrait course the other week but you literally hold these and have your lens and shoot through them and it just gives a really cool bokeh effect um yeah we really like it it'll just give your images just that something different that you don't see every day it is a really cool tip and also very easy and like you say very cheap as well so I hope you've enjoyed the video and picked up some really cool portrait tips. It's been a fun video to make and a different format to what I usually do. So let me know in the comments below whether you've enjoyed it. I want to say a big thank you to Susan from Brisbane Camera Hire for allowing us to use the Brilliant White Studio. This is a really cool space. So again, more information down below if you're interested in finding out more about this studio or Brisbane Camera Hire. We've had a lot of fun, haven't we? <laughs> we have. It really has been great. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget down below comments suggestions and questions we'll see you again sometime soon see ya, see ya. bye